Hi everyone, welcome to another video in the series where we are discussing how to get a cloud job. In my previous video, I had shared with you all this diagram. If you want access to this diagram, by the way, let me know. If there's enough interest, I will somehow find a way to share it with you all. However, it does take a lot of work, so I don't know if giving it away for free is fair, but we'll see. But anyway, I shared this journey or this timeline where ultimately I can see someone going from prereqs, so you've worked some sort of other role prior, and you have either a degree, you've attended a boot camp, you have some sort of other technical work experience, though that's kind of an exception because you would skip this phase and go straight to applying to your cloud role, or you have an entry level tech role and the self-taught framework, which is for me, two certs, two projects in one year entry level experience. And then you can go from that to a cloud exposure role and then a cloud job in anywhere from two years to four years in time. I think it's very realistic, very possible. And I found there was a lot of interest in understanding a little bit more about this, this role, this phase here, cloud exposure, what that looks like. So it looks like a lot of people either have some sort of degree, have attended a boot camp, have some sort of other, uh, sort of like you're in an entry level role and you're self teaching. Like, how do you go from that? And you, you, you take the next step into your, into your potential cloud job, something like cloud engineer, cloud developer, DevOps engineer. So today we are going to talk about that. Um, hi, my name is GPS. I do cloud things at Microsoft and here on YouTube, please give this video a like, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment. It really does help not only in metrics, but also just in, it's encouraging. It's encouraging to know you all uh, like the content uh, and welcome to a new video. All right. So back into this cloud exposure uh, phase here. Again, I think you can potentially spend a year to two years, two years, probably pushing it a year to year and a half. You're, you're solid, you're gold. That coupled with your past year to two years of experience, I'm pretty sure you're, you're in terms of skill set and experience, you're not lacking. It's more so if you're getting rejected, it's probably resume, interviewing skills, not knowing, not networking enough, something like that. Uh, but yeah, cloud exposure, but what, what I mean by cloud exposure is it's your stepping stone. It's these roles that don't necessarily have cloud in them, though I have inc included here a column that are essentially roles that have cloud, like cloud developer, junior cloud developer, junior DevOps engineer, junior site reliability engineer, junior data engineer, junior cloud admin, junior cloud security analyst, junior cloud solution architect. And these, a lot of these have cloud in them. And these are essentially the junior levels to the roles that you want to end up going to. I think you are in your, in your right mind to go and apply with, uh, to these roles here. We'll talk about this column in a second to these role, because you know, if you're doing the, the self-taught framework, you've got two certs, two projects, one entry level year of experience. And most importantly, you've learned a CLI, a programming language, a cloud platform and DevOps fundamentals. So you have the skill sets. You, you have the skill set. It's more so this time tailoring your resume, being able to speak about your projects and applying, 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 probably facing a lot of rejection, which is why I include the cloud exposure phase instead of going straight from once completing prereqs straight to cloud, cloud, cloud job, uh, but you have the stepping stone here. But I say 100% go for them. As you apply for these roles, go and apply for these roles too, because like I mentioned, the formula to landing a role is 100%, it's 50% you're, what you're in charge of, your, your projects, your skill set, all those types of things, and then 50% luck. And one day there could be just 50% luck available. If you got 50, there's 50% luck available, right place, right time, opportunity, boom, 100%, you'll, you'll find yourself in a junior DevOps engineer role or something like that. So go for these, right? 100% go for these. Now on the left side are more, perhaps a little bit more realistic when, when luck is running on the low. And these are junior solution architect, cloud migration specialist, cloud sales representative, cloud technical writer, cloud customer success manager, cloud training specialist, and cloud support specialist. I got these by asking ChatGPT a bunch of questions in terms of like, what are the most popular roles out there that don't necessarily, aren't necessarily cloud engineering roles, but will give me exposure to cloud computing technologies. And it gave me these here. 
And I think they're actually pretty good. So we're going to talk about these one by one. I actually might group some of these. So let's start first with the junior solution architect and the cloud sales representative, because these are very sales based and focused roles. And you could potentially make full on careers by being in these cloud exposure roles. I think one thing I, I, I've seen people sort of get confused about is I see people who have a background, perhaps in business or in sales, they're, they're very charismatic. They love having that sales type interaction with people. And they think that there's no place for that in cloud computing, but tech, technical sales, uh, solution architect type roles, which you, you know, your commission based. So you dip your, your salary will depend on your commission can be very, very lucrative. I have spoken to many, many people at Microsoft who have these types of roles and the commissions that they make are insane. Now I remember this one very specific interaction with someone I met last summer. We were at like a happy hour thing and I was just like, oh my goodness, I am in the wrong field. <laughs> so if you were someone with a sales or business background, there's pl there are plenty of opportunities here. But I will also say that maybe you, you find yourself applying to these roles, but you don't want to end up being this for like the next couple of years or whatever your end goal role is. Don't think that the experience that you gain here won't be something that you can apply to your next role. Absolutely. Because solution architects, sales, uh, sales representatives, you have to know the product that you're selling, obviously. You have to be able to speak to it and you have to be able to speak to it in a way that is friendly to people who are perhaps non-technical, which in my opinion is a skill set that you will use for the rest of your life and something that gets developed in like the, the earlier you develop it, the better you'll be. And this is also another reason why I highly recommend support roles as people's first roles, because you develop people skills, your communication skills there, and that's something that you will take to the rest of your career, right? So you, you, you have to be able to speak to what you're, you're selling. You can't just be like, oh, you should purchase this cloud service. And they're going to ask, well, what about this other one? And you're like, oh, I don't know. And they ask you, what are the differences? And you're like, oh, I don't know. You, you, you can't do that, right? So sales types, sales based roles, great ones for cloud exposure. Then cloud migration special, I should have grouped these. Actually, you know what? We're going to group these right now. We're going to do this because this is going to make a little bit set, more sense here. If We group this, this here, and then this, and then this, and then this, and then we put these. So we'll put these together and then we can make a little bit more sense of what all these mean because you develop sort of different skill sets, but all very, 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 very applicable to that next step. So we're gonna call these sales-based, sales-based. Oh, this is way too too large, okay. And we'll just make this uh, another call here, sales-based. Then we're gonna do content-based. And then here, we're gonna put these as support-based, okay. See, I, I continue improving this diagram all the time. Whoops. I'm going to move this over here, over here. And we could probably make these just a little. Oh, they're already pretty small. Okay, cool. So we talked about the sales-based ones. Now let's talk about, let's talk about the content-based ones first. So I totally forgot that my previous role, I don't know why, is content-based. I actually worked at A Cloud Guru before working at Microsoft. So after I left my my cloud engineering role, I worked at A Cloud Guru and I was an associate community training architect. My goal was to essentially create content around the things that I had learned in my previous roles as a cloud engineer, as a sysadmin in my help desk role. And it was very lucrative in my opinion. I was making 92,000 USD. 92, that's very, very close to six figures. That's the most amount of money that I ever thought I would make. And actually the one before that, when I made 75,000 USD, that was the most amount of money I ever thought I made. But then, you know, I, I, I made this jump to 92K and I was like, I had no idea that content-based rules could be so lucrative. And it makes sense because 
you know, all these professionals who are working in tech, they need to learn somehow. And if you are good at teaching, if you have a background, maybe you are a teacher now, uh, maybe you're a tutor, maybe you like teaching, maybe you've done some training type work and, you know, you, you know how difficult it is to teach. However, if that's a skill set that you want to leverage and you can also make this a very lucrative career, like, again, if you don't want to go cloud engineer, you don't want to go DevOps engineer, but you think that's your only path, I'm here to tell you, no, you can leverage your skill set with your teaching skill set to go and be in a cloud technical writer where you're creating documentation, you're creating support articles for some sort of cloud based service or cloud platform. You can be a cloud training specialist, teach other people uh, things like certification content or labs or like a bunch of other things like that too. And you're also, it's a role where you're going to be teaching yourself a lot and very well because you're going to go and have to teach uh, content and in order for your, your, your content to be, or your platform that you teach on to be rated very well. Like you have to have a good approach, a good teaching approach, right? So technical writer, cloud training specialist, you get hands-on with all these services because again, maybe you have to create demos or you have to create uh, screen recordings or something like that, but also great, great roles for cloud exposure. And again, like I mentioned, very lucrative. And cloud like support-based. So when we think of help desk support at that prereq level, this is very similar to that where you're focusing on ticketing systems, you're focusing on documentation, troubleshooting, and then you're also focused on, what's the uh, ticketing systems, documentation, troubleshooting, and how did I, for, I always forget these, uh, people skills, people skills, because you're talking, obviously, you're resolving people's skills by talking with them, right? You're resolving people's issues by talking with them. Uh, but this is in the context of cloud. So I, I put here cloud migration specialist, cloud customer success manager, and cloud support specialist. Now these, you are you're potentially working at like these large companies like Accenture or what's the other one? I think it's Deloitte uh, where they have just thousands and thousands of people and teams like put into teams or you're working with other external customers. Perhaps you're, you're helping them like for example, cloud migration specialists. You might have a little bit more of uh, a sales, sales focus, not necessarily sales focus, but initial phone call focus. Uh, where you're put on to figure out like some basics about what's going to happen in the project, what needs to happen in the project, and then it's passed on to someone more senior. Cloud Customer Success Manager, you might be on a, a company that has some, some sort of cloud-based pr uh, product, and your job is to work with customers with whatever issue they're having. Or you're a cloud support specialist. You are, again, resolving issues that customers are having with your cloud product, right? Again, it's, it's support-based, but you're getting hands-on with whatever that cloud product is because you ha you have to get hands-on in order to fix whatever issue people are having. Uh, so support-based. So these are three areas that I feel like can give you a lot, a lot of exposure. And to moving into your cloud role, again, a year to two years into this, uh, I, obviously you're building stuff. You could potentially take it to the next step with the self-taught framework and get like a professional level certification or another complementary certification and ideally you would build another project or improve the project that you built in this phase here and you're writing about it, you're talking about it and you're improving your time here a year to two years and then go apply to your cloud job, uh, cloud engineer, cloud developer, DevOps, SRE, security, whatever it is that you wanna do. The last thing I wanted to add is in the previous video we talked about interviewing skills, resume, cover letter and LinkedIn, uh, but I added here under the additional things to better your chances at all stages which is participate in communities and outside of already uh, creating your content and learning in public. If you can give talks, that's awesome. I've gone on any topic that you want to. There are tons of meetups out there that you can attend and you can also give talks at. And maybe you could potentially organize one. I think that's awesome too. Contribute to open source. If you want to contribute to Learn to Cloud, what you can do is you know go to learntocloud.guide and here at our homepage, what we do is display a random cloud definition that was submitted by people in the community. For example, Jenkins, this is an article to learn more about Jenkins. Here's the definition this person has submitted. And Simon is the author of this definition here. And here this actually links to whatever link you want to <laughs> add there. You can submit a definition, definition by hitting submit a definition, click on submit a cloud definition, get started. 
and then you need to provide fill in this JSON with your word. I personally go one by one and sort of coach people through or if if they don't need any help, then they just submit it and then I, uh, you know, approve the, the submission. But those are ways that you can contribute to open source there. You can also fix or improve documentation that you see out there that's open source. Perhaps there are other first contributor friendly issues out there that you can find on, on GitHub or on open source in general. Highly recommend you participate in that and put yourself out there. Get to get to know people. Participating in panels and, and just other events, I think, is a great idea. I always like to tell the story of my I applied to Microsoft three times. The first time I was directed automatically, the second time as well, and the third time I had two referrals, and I always happened to know the hiring manager. But I didn't know that I knew the hiring manager. What happened was I was part of the Microsoft MVP program, which I highly recommend people look into ambassador-type programs. GitHub has them, Microsoft has them, AWS has them. It just improves your way of networking and meeting other people who work at these companies that you may want to end up working at. So I was part of that program, and I was asked to be on this panel and it was a couple of months before I ended up applying for the third time to Microsoft. And I, one of the people on that panel ended up being the hiring manager. So when I, I applied to the role and the person who referred me told me, oh, the hiring manager's name is this. I was like, that sounds so familiar. I looked back at the invitation to that panel and I saw that this person's name was on there. I was like, this is so amazing. What a coincidence. But also, like I mentioned, landing a role 100%. 50% in your control, 50% luck. And this happened to be just, that, that luck percentage for me just happened to be up here. So when we had our initial conversation on the role, they were they were clearly like, oh, we've, we've spoken before. We, yeah, we were on that event. So there was instant rapport there because he had already known who I was. And it was all because I decided to participate in this panel. Well, I got an invitation, of course, but I had been out there public, publicly and people had known my, my name and they were like, oh yeah, I think she would be great for this. And it worked out to my favor, right? Put yourself out there. Again, remember the rules. Don't be fake. Don't be annoying. <laughs> don't let it consume you, but leverage it. Learn how to leverage these types of things. All right, that's it for this video. Another long one, but I hope I provide a little bit more insight into what I mean by cloud exposure type roles. If there are any kind of areas of this journey you want me to cover, uh, perhaps you want to little, learn a little bit more about like, oh, you're not even cover the prereqs, like you're working in a different field, how to go through that prereq phase, let me know or I don't know, any kind of topic around this. Um, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Peace.